Welcome dear students, today our lecture is on advent of Bronze Ages in Central and West Asia. The objectives of the lecture are beginning of the Bronze Age in Central Asia, beginning of the Bronze Age in West Asia, different phases of Bronze Age, know about Hatti civilization during the Middle Bronze Age in Central Anatolia. Now Bronze Age in Central Asia. Between 3000 and 1500 BCE, Central Asia experienced the Bronze Age, which has been classified into early, that is from 3000 to 2500 BCE, middle 2500 to 2000 BCE, and late Bronze Age, that is from 2000 to 1500 BCE. The Kope Dog Oasis Zone, which dates to the first part of the third millennium and is known in archaeology as the Namazga fourth period was where the early patterns of the Bronze Age were found. Few of the early settlements in the Tejan Delta disappeared, but the Elton Deep and Gurjan Plains in Iran and Merginia made huge material progress. The area of Elton Deep, which spans a significant area about 26 hectares and has distinct urban characteristics is where the social, culture and material progress was most noticeable. A walled enclosure with lanes and corridors as well as substantial structures that have been referred to as ceremonial centers and smaller structures housing nuclear families have all been discovered during excavations. Grave goods discovered from a variety of burials at Altin Deep, both communal and individual, do not exhibit significant diversity in terms of the richness of the goods, indicating a social structure without distinction in this area during the early Bronze Age. The primary indicators of change in the material lives of the people of this region of Central Asia include the increased craft specialization and use of transportation like camel carts, even though the primary source of subsistence remained agriculture supplemented with animal husbandry. The introduction of the porter's wheel and improved temperature management in the kiln not only increased output but also made sure that the ceramic shapes were uniform. Along this metallurgical breakthroughs were made. The artifacts recovered from the Elton Deep site show that copper alloys including copper lead tin, copper silver and copper lead were used to create seals, decorations and dress accessories as well as pins with ornate heads. The presence of metallurgical kilns besides the workshops and habitations is evidence of the rigor of metallurgical techniques. The terracotta artifacts discovered in the Kope Dog pavement provide evidence of a belief system that exalts forces of production connected to both agricultural fertility and human reproduction. According to Vadim M. Mason, three main features characterize the Middle Bronze Age in Central Asia. First, the expansion of the local urban civilization in the foothill zone. Second, the growth of the Murghab Delta's settled population and last, the strengthening of ties with nearby areas including Afghanistan, Iran, Balochistan, the Indus Valley and Mesopotamia. Elton Deep and Namazga Deep are thought to have grown into powerful cities that ruled the area around the Kope Dag Oasis. But because neither city has any palace-like architecture or royal tombs, Academics have concluded that state development in these areas must not have advanced very much. Scholars do, however, point to a divided culture based on an urban structure constructed upon partition of the population into separate quarters of laborers and the elite, the size of the dwellings and capacious of the streets, and separate ceremonial centers. The different sizes of the homes have been interpreted as 
representing three distinct social classes. That is the lower class who live in multi-roomed homes as an extended family, the middle class who live as separate families in five to six room homes, and the upper class who live in large spacious homes that serve multiple economic purposes. The collective and individual graves at Altin Dip and Namazga Dip also begin to show social inequality with the lower strata's collective graves containing only a few clay vessels while the elite is contained an assortment of metal seals, bracelets, rings, stone bead necklaces and terracotta figurines. White marble ceramics, copper artifacts, silver mirrors and ivory rods were all found in the individual graves of the upper class, plainly identifying the deceased as belonging to a ruling or priestly class with a high social rank. The connection between this region of Central Asia and India is established by the stamp seals from Harappa. However, trade with the Iranian Plateau and Mesopotamia is also suggested by the exchange of goods like lapis lazuli and other items. The Mesopotamian ziggurat is thought to have served as an inspiration for the Sitapu Tower at Altin Deep, which has been designated as a ritual center. This stage of cultural evolution has also been marked by advances in astronomical knowledge, worship of natural forces, domestication of animals, breeding methods, and crop innovation. As the Middle Bronze Age came to an end, larger settlements like Altin Deep and Namazga Deep in the Kope Dog Oasis began to dwindle, while smaller settlements like Kalili and Togolok in the Murgib Delta began to grow. In Central Asia, the Late Bronze Age was characterized by several basic historical shifts that had far-reaching political, social, economic, and cultural repercussions. Similar changes were taking place in the nearby regions, and these changes affected in Central Asia as well. The development of tiny communities that either replaced the previous urban centers at the same area as in the Namazga Deep and Uluk Deep are formed independently in other locations like the Tekken Deep and Elkan Deep was a significant and noticeable change. Although the dwellings in these communities were constructed of strong bricks, there was a general fall in the standard of poetry terracotta figurine production, and metal seal manufacturing. To the east in the middle of the Amodaria, in ancient Bactria, and in the Murgab Valley, in ancient Marginia, however, new towns showed a distinct side of human cultural development. In various regions of Central Asia, the Bronze Age city of nomads dispersed around the same time, or roughly around 1500 BCE. This was followed by several phases of their conflict as well as peaceful interaction with the settled agricultural societies that ultimately brought about a cultural synthesis. This was a time when many other nomadic tribes or city of dwellers migrated into Central Asia, either driving out the native people or assimilating into the established cultures. Those of the Tazya Bagyab culture, which grew close to the lower reaches of the Amodaria and Dastikozi, which occupied the lower reaches of Zeroshan, were prominent among these. With superior reference to their poetry, metalwork, and burial practices, each of these cultures are seen to be an outgrowth of Andronova culture. The material culture exhibits traits from both farming and city of civilizations where there is interaction with satellite societies. A notable example is the BMAC, that is Bacteria Marginia Archaeological Complex, where towns from this time period were fortified like previously, but also contained primitive ceramics and a popular cremation ceremony among the Andronova culture's inhabitants. Based on these discoveries, researchers like Mason note that the city of dwellers who invaded portions of Central Asia were primarily focused on raising cattle and were commanded by a military nobility that utilized chariots and bronze weapons. 
In a subsequent argument, he claims that some of these immigrants were culturally imitated into stable cultures, particularly in the oasis zones. In addition, Mason contends that the steppe civilizations of southern Siberia and Kazakhstan were impacted by the Central Asian settlement traditions, particularly those of the Andronova culture. He goes on to say that two parallel processes, the cultural assimilation of the immigrants and the indigenous population's linguistic assimilation were operating notably in the oasis zone of the BMAC. Nevertheless, amid this volatile time of migrations, military strife and mutual absorption, according to Mason, an Indo-Iranian identity was developing in Central Asia. Now Bronze Age in West Asia. West Asian Bronze Age civilizations originated in Mesopotamia, specifically in the Akkadian and Sumerian regions. Anatolia was a significant area of West Asia that experienced rapid growth during the Bronze Age. The city of Troy, also known as Troy First in Hisarlik, which has been dated to between 3000 and 2500 BCE, has been the site of the earliest and best known Bronze Age civilization in Anatolia. German and American archaeologists have discovered a wall of fortified city that contained residential sections. In the coastal regions, people subsisted mostly on agriculture, hunting and fishing. The existence of a wealthy class is shown by the presence of a few modest bronze implements. But experts point out that small city-states with trade connections to inhabitants of Mesopotamia and the Asian Sea region characterized Anatolia's early Bronze Age. In Anatolia, the Middle Bronze Age, that is from 2500 to 1800 BCE, was marked by greater wealth and significant cultural achievements, which were mostly based on the presence of a well-established metal industry. Troy II, that is 2500 to 2200 BCE, and Troy III to Troy V are the names given to the Anatolian sites that characterize the Middle Bronze Age. The settlements of Troy I were developed further during the Troy II phase. Rich reserves of gold, silver, copper and tin gave the kings of Troy II the confidence they needed to expand their realm through monopolization of key international trade routes. The porters of Troy II employed both the wheel and the porter's kiln. One of the earliest examples of planet development was the city. Few scholars point out that a notable example of similar urban layout may be found in the Acropolis in Athens, which was constructed much later. It is thought that Indo-European tribes who had invaded the city had destroyed it. However, it does not appear that the invaders took permanent residence in the city as there was no indication of a cultural shift throughout the Troy III to Troy V period. However, the later phases also show signs of the progressive decline of the Trojan kingdom. The Hatti civilization was a significant one during the Middle Bronze Age in Central Asia from 2500 to 2000 BCE. The Hattis are an ethnic group native to Asia despite the structural differences between their language and other Asiatic languages. Our knowledge of the Hatti civilization is primarily derived from Hittite sources who succeeded the Hattians in Anatolia. One of this culture's most notable centers, Elasa Hoik, is where many of the Hattian artifacts, ceramics, metal items and tombs have been discovered. Copper, gold and silver were plentiful in central Anatolia. It provided the major civilizations of Mesopotamia and Egypt with the copper metal they needed. The wealth of central Anatolia, in particular and of Anatolia as a whole increased along with the desires of these civilizations for copper. The Hattian kingdom was supplanted by the Hittites, an Indo-European nomadic tribe in the final stages of the Bronze Age 
from 1800 to 1200 BCE in Anatolia. They are also known as Nasians because they spoke the Nasian language. However, the Hattians and Nasians coexisted for about two centuries, which resulted in a synthesis and the development of a new civilization known as the Hittite civilization. Numerous archaeological discoveries, particularly those made in the middle of the 19th century in Bogaiskai and taking the form of written writings on clay tablets, have given us enough details to roughly reconstruct Hittite history. Along with Hattusas, the Hittite sites of Kultep, that is Nisa, Karahayuk, Asambayuk, and Alisar have all been excavated. Hattusas and Kultep dominate as the main Hittite centers, despite the fact that other Hittite cities are also mentioned in the text. Following Hattian custom, the Hittite kings established an oligarchic system in which they shared authority with other chieftains. The Mitanni were a significant nomadic population that settled in East and Southeast Anatolia. They first settled around the upper Euphrates and later expanded into northern Syria to form the Mitanni Empire, which flourished between 1650 and 1450 BCE and was the most powerful of the Hurrian kingdoms. The names of the Mitanni kings were of Indo-Aryan descent and the nobility mainly consisted of charioteers and horsemen. In the Near East, Mitanni's is credited with introducing a number of advances in the art of combat. One of these was a spoked wheeled, lighter horse-drawn chariot that increased the effectiveness of the riding archers. They are also regarded as experts in horse training and using cavalry strategies. The Cassites, an Indo-European ethnic group, who settled in the central Zagros mountains of Mesopotamia during the Late Bronze Age, eventually took over the old Babylonian Empire. The Hittite invasion severely damaged the Babylonian Empire, allowing the Cassites to take over governmental control of Babylonia by 1595 BCE. Despite a brief period of foreign dominance, according to George Rocks, the three centuries of Cassite authority reflect the region's most enduring period of political unification. The rulers of Cassite kingdom employed diplomatic strategies among which the exchange of royal gifts played a significant role to ward off Mitanni and Egyptian invasions. According to the Egyptian text kept in the archives, the powerful nations of late Bronze Age, West Asia, engaged in diplomatic and commercial trade that was characterized by the giving and receiving of royal presents. The Kassite kings traded goods like horses, chariots, oil and lapis lazuli for gold, silver, wood and ivory with the Egyptian kings. Few academics have noted that the Cassites amassed so much Egyptian gold in this way that the metal became the benchmark of value for the area's economy. Despite having a kinship system, it took the Cassites little time to adopt the dialect, beliefs and customs of the native Mesopotamians. The Cassites were able to maintain regional stability for some time in this way. The Kassite Empire is thought to have been governed by kings through a bureaucratic framework supported by a chariot warrior nobility according to archaeological artifacts and literature that have been preserved. Syria and Palestine did not experience governmental unification in the Bronze Age partly because of their geographic location and the lack of any natural borders. The Mediterranean coastal region in the West with ancient coastal cities like Ugarit and Babylos, the mountains parallel to the coast with fertile valleys like Amanis, the interior plains with such big ancient territorial states as Aleppo, the Syrian desert steppe of 
until Euphrates River, which served the transit trade route connecting Mesopotamia, Anatolia and Egypt, are the five main geographical regions that have been spread from east to west in Syria, Palestine. Several Semitic speaking people lived in Syria during the early Bronze Age. French researchers have discovered evidence of the existence of Mari, a magnificent city-state that thrived on the Middle Euphrates between 2350 and 2000 BCE. The Italian archaeologists also found Ebla, a significant city-state nearby Aleppo that was contemporaneous with Mari and situated in the interior. The cuneiform Mesopotamian and local Syrian Semitic writing on clay tablets indicate connections between the city of Elba and northern Syria, Mesopotamia, the Middle Euphrates region, Anatolia and the coastal cities of Syria. Due to the settlement of nomadic Amorites who were residents of the Syro-Arabian desert in this area during the Middle Bronze Age that is from 2000 to 1600 BCE, urban civilization in Syria suffered. However, during this time, Ebla also expanded into a large metropolis with palaces, tombs and temples. The coastal towns of Ugarit and Byblos entered a booming phase of intense trade with Egypt during this period, with Egyptian pharaohs sending officials to these coastal towns to organize trade. The Syrian city of Mari experienced another brief era of prosperity near the Euphrates before Hammurabi, the legendary Babylonian king, decimated it in the middle of the 18th century BCE. Syria's late Bronze Age, that is from 1600 to 1200 BCE, was characterized by military rivalry between the Hittites, Hurrians, Mitannis, and Egyptians to seize control of various sections of the country. Palestine was less urbanized in the 3rd millennium BCE and settlements were limited to the regions bordered by the Jordan Valley which were more suited for agriculture. According to a legend, the nation was composed of tiny city-states with constrained territories. Among them, Bethshan, Megiddo and Jericho stood out. On the edge of the Negev Desert and the highlands of Judea at Arad, Israeli archaeologists have discovered a city with rampant walls, residential neighborhoods, a separate administrative complex, temples and public buildings. At Tel Yarmouth, which is located in the hills west of Jerusalem, recent excavations have uncovered another significant early Bronze Age site. It was an Acropolis enclosed fortified town. Palestine experienced a trend of urbanization and a shift toward pastoral and rural settlement near the end of the 3rd millennium BCE. Modern archaeologists have described this as being the result of internal ecological change. According to Egyptian texts, Palestine was reconstructed during the Middle Bronze Age. The procedure involved caused a decline in wandering behavior and a return to settled life. The golden period of the Palestine Bronze Age is regarded as the Canaanite civilization, Hadzar, which is located at a major intersection between Syria and the Jordan Valley, was a significant Palestinian town during this time. Palestine was placed under the control of the new kingdom of Egypt by the late Bronze Age. Now, conclusion. Therefore, it is evident from the account given here that both large and smaller empires were representative of the type of political systems in West Asia during the Bronze Age. The Hittites, Assyrians, Mitannis, Cassites, and the great pharaohs of Egypt were among the great imperial powers in this area during the late Bronze Age. Smaller empires were largely centered in Syria's river valleys and beaches, extending all the way to the Asian Sea. The coastal city-states of Ugarit and Byblos stood out among them. 
despite the late bronze age being characterized by armed conflict all of these empires were able to maintain their economic viability through an international system of trade and diplomacy this was primarily caused by the realization that trade and commerce could only thrive on the basis of stability and their survival depended on economic activity the monarchs exchanged costly presents greeted each other as father and brother and formed marriage connections in order to maintain this stability this encouraged long distance seaborne trade with merchant ships carrying a range of goods particularly in the eastern mediterranean region along with the exchange of precious metals and other items crafts political and religious ideas and architectural styles were also spread large commercial cities like ugarit developed into the center of this kind of trade with the collapse of the international system of trade and diplomacy and the emergence of a new political social and economic framework in the region under study the new wave of tribal invasions from 1200 bc onward caused wide spread upheaval in west asia as well in the eastern mediterranean with this we come to the end of today's lecture thank you Thank you.